Hey, I'm Matt, and this was my 60 plus year old workbench. The surface was super rough and warped, the joinery looked like this, and it had just a little bit of a lean to it. So, I destroyed it, with the goal of remaking it using only materials left behind in this garage by the previous owners. After gathering scraps and measuring the space, I decided to make a smaller table level with the rolling toolbox that I already owned. That way I'd have two tables I could configure in different ways, and as a bonus, the toolbox even had a fold-out table that would be perfect for a miter saw. If you want to know more about the free 3D software I use, check out the channel SketchUp Essentials. <laughs> to start, I laid out some of the pieces and cut out the best parts of them. Even the best pieces were splitting and warped, but this was a lemonade on a lemons kind of project. To assemble the legs, I connected 2x4s with 4x4s from the old workbench. I sanded down the glue areas, then marked where my dowels would go. I used a dowel rod joint construction because I thought it would be a more forgiving method for working with wonky wood like this. With those marked, I drilled out the dowel holes, cut some dowels, and started gluing. I made sure to get plenty of mustard on these little hot dogs, squished them into the holes, and... To finish the leg assemblies, I added some 2x6s to the top, which, yes, were a little bit warped, but between all that glue and the oak dowels, I figured it would be fine. At that point, the legs were assembled and they just needed to dry overnight. And in case you were wondering, yes, the paper did glue to the legs. With that done, I cut the cross braces from some rafter 2x6s and laid everything out upside down. These 2x6s are what the tabletop will attach to in the end. The clamps I had weren't long enough, so I used this YouTube trick I saw and connected two together, which worked great. Just like the legs, I drilled the dowels, deployed my state-of-the-art glue capture system, made sure all the glueable surfaces were sanded smooth, applied the mustard, and ran the dowels in. I also added a 2x4 to the middle of the legs to keep them from drying bow-legged. The last step for the base was to add these casters I found on Amazon. They came with little bolts, but I had cabinetry screws that were easier to use and worked great. Once the wheels were on, I carefully removed the brace and stood it up. It did not immediately fall apart and it fit the space perfectly, so I started working on the toolbox part of the table which only took like 30 minutes of actual work. First, I cut this scrap piece of MVF I've been using as my temporary table to fit perfectly into the top of the toolbox. I then Jackson Pollocked it to a larger piece of MDF. Once dry, the smaller piece nestled perfectly into the toolbox and held the large piece in place. The miter saw table was built on this little fold-out tray. To make this work, I snagged a 1x1 one one and an 8 inch piece of plywood, which I fashioned a sliding mechanism thing that'll keep the table fixed to the fold-out tray. I glued those guys onto a piece of the MDF, and once dry, I slid it on. She was leaning just a little, so I had to visit the scrap bin and add a little material to make it level with the top surface but it turned out great. I shifted back to finishing up the workbench by chopping off all these little nubs, sanding it down a bit, and attaching the tabletop with pocket hole screws I had left over from my SUV camper project. It was really starting to look like a table at this point, and I actually loved all the imperfections. The Japanese call this love of the imperfect wabi-sabi. So, use that information however you'd like. 
I rolled it into place, filled in the gaps between the studs with 2x4s, and was finally ready for the test we've all been waiting for. In the end, I don't think I made the easiest workbench or even the cheapest, despite the fact that 90% was made from scrap lumber. But I kept the old timey garage feel, learned a lot, and have a movable surface I can configure in several ways. Okay, so full disclosure, I did end up buying the dowel rods, the glue, and the caster wheels. So I spent around $40 on this project. Obviously, you're not gonna have the same junk laying around that I do, but hopefully I inspired you to get creative and work with what you do have. And if you wanna see every video from every YouTuber that helped me make this, check out my playlist called Workbench. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave a comment, even if you didn't, because I would love to hear all the things I did wrong. I'm sure there's a lot of them. Looking forward to hearing that. See you later.